So before lunch, we were looking at this dog code and what we had said to ourselves was that we have these two constructors that have different signatures. This one has no arguments. This one has three arguments. And we said that in our test code, we are able to know which constructor we're calling by matching the signature. And what I wanted to talk about right now is something else that we've already learned earlier in the year, which has to do with overriding, which is a similar concept that's sometimes mixed up with overloading. Overriding basically means that the parent class, the, the class that I'm inheriting from, in this case, dog, has a method, and I'm going to replace that method with my own. So the first thing you need to understand about today's lesson is that overriding, see this overriding? It takes place between two classes. It takes place between a super class, in this case, the super class is dog, and then it also takes place with a subclass. In this case, the, the subclass is that the one that inherited from the super class. In this case, the super class is dog and the subclass is beagle. So what's happening here is that I am replacing the dog method with a custom one that I have. Now, I didn't mention this before, but this at override is completely optional and is not even tested on the AP exam. But you should put this in here, oops, because the compiler will help you if you accidentally put a method in here, sorry, if you accidentally put a parameter in here, it will tell you that the signatures don't match, so you're not overriding. If you don't have this override here, you'll see there'll be no error, but your code won't work. So this override is put in here to help you make sure that you are indeed overriding your parents' method and that the signatures match perfectly. Once again, this is optional. You don't need to put this on my tests on your AP exam, but you should use it whenever you're trying to override. Now, let's talk a little bit about how overriding works. You look at the signature for this speak method. It says public void speak. Notice that the signature that you're replacing is identical. The signatures have to be identical, otherwise you're not overriding. So for example, if this particular speak method were to take some kind of string here like this, then you can see that when we compile, it's not going to work anymore because the signatures don't match. So it says, how can I override if the signatures don't match? So when you override, the signatures have to match. Now, that is a brief review for you of overwriting, which we have already seen. Today, we're going to talk about a different concept called overloading. You've already seen it take place here, sorry, with these two constructors that are overloading each other. We can also overload regular methods. Today, I'm going to overload the speak method. Whereas overriding takes place between two classes, a parent class and a child class, or more commonly known as a super class and a subclass, overloading takes place inside one class. So here, for example, in the dog class, I have overloaded the constructors. Notice that the name of the method is identical, but they have different signatures. Here, I'm going to overload the speak method. And you can see now I have overloaded the speak method. There are two different speak methods, and there's never any confusion about which one I'm going to call because they have different signatures. The signature on this speak method is speak, no arguments. The signature on this speak method is speak string. So now in the code, in the code, if I ever need to call the speak method, it knows which speak method to call. In this case, which one is it going to call? Is it going to call the first one or the second one? Take a look. Take a look. Which one is it going to call? Mr. Sneed, which one's it going to call, sir? It calls a second one because you can see the signature matches. See? Speak with a string. Speak with a string. 
Now I have some questions for you. Let's say that I had a speak method like this and I had another speak method like this. Will this compile or will it not? Do they have the same signature or do they have unique signatures? Miss Tamara, what do you think? They have unique signatures. The first one, the speak method has a signature of just speak. This one's signature is speak string int. And this one's signature is speak int string. So you can see that when I go to compile this, you can see now that these two speak methods do not interfere with one another. They have unique signatures. Now, let's look at a different idea. Let's say I have one that looks like this and another one that looks like this. Notice that now the, the variables are different. Is this going to compile or not? I think Blue Jay is already giving away my game here. Mr. Garofalo, what do you think? Why not? It has the same signature. So therefore, another point from today's lesson is that the variable names are, are or are not part of the signature. S and T, N and W are not part of the signature. It's only the data types that are part of the signature. So the signature for this method is speak string int, and this one is speak string int. They have identical signature, these two methods. So you can't do that in Java. Now let's look at one other example. Now my question is, do these two methods have the same signature? or do they have different signatures? This one's a little harder, and I'd like you to discuss this with the person next to you. Mr. Pandali, what's your gut telling you, sir? Do these two signatures match, or do they not match? If you were listening carefully to what Mr. Sarkar said earlier, you would know the answer to this question, sir, but I'm gonna put you on the spot now and ask you to make a guess. They have the same signature because the return values are not part of the signature. So the fact that this is a void and this is an int is not enough to make the signatures different. So the third thing you need to learn from today's lesson is that when you're overloading, the return type is not part of the signature of a method. So this is not allowed. This is considered an overlap. Try to understand why. If I call a method and I say speak with a string and an int, it still doesn't know which one to call. So that's not allowed. How many different speak methods can I have? How many times can I overload? Who wants to take a guess at it? As many as you want. You can overload to your heart's content. Okay. And so once again, let me review. Overriding takes place between two classes, a parent class or a super class like dog, and then a subclass like Basenji or Beagle or Poodle. And when you override, you're replacing your parent's method with your own version. When you're overloading, it's within a class. And you're basically creating methods with the same name, but they have to have unique signatures. What gives them a unique signature is that either the data types in the parameters or the sequence of the data types has to be different between the two methods. They each have to have their own unique signature. Once they have a unique signature, the ambiguity is removed. And so when you're calling the methods, the compiler always knows which one you're calling. 